Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, August 22nd, 2023 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Guy in his honeypot did notice a marked increase in requests for System BC. System BC is actually a malware. It's a remote access trojan that turns systems into proxy and starting a few days ago it looks like we had a marked increase in scans for a url related to system bc system bc slash password dot php turning systems into proxies and building basically infrastructure out of compromised systems is certainly not new what may be happening here and that's sort of why we see these scans in our uh, honeypots is that other attackers are essentially sort of looking uh, for open proxies that they can take over so more or less parasitic scans there's also currently at&t reporting about a large proxy network that they're seeing they're calling it proxy nation i don't think the two events are really related in their case mac and windows systems apparently are being recruited here to be part of the proxy botnet and they state that something like 400,000 systems have already uh, been uh, connected to this particular uh, proxy botnet. In some cases even more advanced adversaries have been uh, taking advantage of uh, proxies. Uh, Microtech devices for example were uh, compromised uh, while ago and then later used for some more sophisticated attacks. And remember, about a week ago on August 8th, Microsoft did publish an update for Exchange Server 2016 and 2019, but shortly after did redact and remove that update again because it apparently did cause issues with some non-English exchange servers. Well, uh, the update is back, so if you put off installing it, it's available again. So take a look and hopefully they fix whatever caused these problems. And imagine that we do have more vulnerabilities for Ivanti, aka Mobile Iron products that are currently being exploited. Ivanti Sentry is vulnerable to CVE 2023-38035. It's a problem with the admin portal API that's typically exposed on port 8443. This vulnerability allows unauthenticated access to, as they call it, sensitive APIs that essentially allows admin access to the Ivanti Sentry portal. And just to reiterate, the vulnerability has already been exploited, of course, in more selective targeted attacks. An update is now available from Avanti. Well, if you're relying on a duo single sign-on a multi-factor authentication solution, you may have experienced some slowness today. Apparently, a lot of customers also had issues logging in at all. The problem, of course, here is that you will need this solution to work in order to log in to systems of your own that you protected with a duo's multi-factor authentication product. Apparently, there were uh, some issues with uh, the cloud components of uh, this uh, particular uh, product. And according to the incident report, uh, Duo has been working on increasing capacity, but also trying sort of to find a root cause of the system. As of the end of Monday, it should be mostly back to normal, according to the status report from Duo. And then there is a nice blog post by Michael Stepankin from Security Lab uh, looking into some of the implementation issues that show up with Mutual TLS. Mutual TLS is becoming more and more important in our securing web apps class. We talk about it a couple times when it sort of goes to microservices and such where Mutual TLS is often a lifesaver. But of course, TLS and X509 certificates are not necessarily trivial to parse and as a result, there are a lot of sort of little implementation issues uh, that slip in. Just as an example, and there's a number of things that are being pointed out here in the blog post, but Keylog apparently had a vulnerability that was discovered uh, by Michael where you could send a number of different certificates and 
any of them would be accepted. So the way this would be exploited is you first send a proper certificate that uh, does include a properly signed uh, username, but then you just attach another certificate uh, to your TLS handshake with a different username that you would like uh, to impersonate and Pretty much any username is then trusted, even in certificates that are not properly validated. Interesting vulnerability and certainly sort of one of those typical, hey, you know, they probably didn't quite think about this exploit scenario because often developers are assuming well-behaved systems that just follow normal patterns and don't include some of these abuse cases. Well, and this is it for today. Thanks and for listening. And uh, well, I always say, tell your friends about this podcast. Let's try something different. If you are talking to a SANS salesperson, anybody else at SANS, well, tell them about the podcast and that you like it. That's it for today. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.